So the first thing you see on my screen is the A to J author, um, authoring environment on author dev. Right now, community testing on our document assembly tool is happening instead of on our production site, which is www.adajauthor.org. It's happening on our staging server, which is authordev.adajauthor.org. So to access it, you need a specific account on author dev. If you have an account on our production site, www.adajauthor.org, you're going to need another account on authordev.adajauthor.org. The way you get that account is you email me. My email is jessica at cali, C-A-L-I dot org, and I will create an account for you. Uh, the turnaround is usually less than an hour um, during normal business time. Once you have an account and you log in, this is what your screen will look like. This is a bare bones version of Drupal. Really the only thing you need to worry about is uh, the author tab. So when you click author six, um, which is the version of A to J author that contains the document assembly tool. So for those of you that weren't on our um, announcement webinar last Thursday, the differences between A to J author, we have A to J version four, which is what is live to the community now. It's been used uh, three and a half million times in the last 10 years. That's the flash-based version, the older version. For the last couple of years, we, we've been working on a brand new version, which is written completely in JavaScript and HTML. It lives on the web. That's what's sitting on production on www.adajauthor.org. It is, uh, has a mobile responsive viewer. It's all cloud-based. We've refreshed it in terms of look of the avatars and that kind of thing. So that's A to J5. A to J6 is what lives here on author dev. And 6 contains the A to J document assembly tool. So the document assembly tool is what makes it a 6 rather than a 5. Exact same functionality as 5. Cloud-based, mobile responsive viewer, the six is only when there is a document assembly, A to J document assembly tool attached to it. If you're working in author dev, this is our staging server. It's not meant to be a save your work forever server. It's supposed to be open only for this period of community testing. So make sure if you are working in author dev, either community testing with LHI, which is also open right now, or working in the document assembly tool, that you save a local copy of your guided interview file, your zipped file, to ensure that you have a copy if at any time the database is unavailable. When community testing ends in December, we will be wiping the database again, so ensure that you have a local copy after that. We have a community testing page on our www site. Here, if you go to the Learn tab, and you drill down to community testing with LHI. If you click that, it takes you to a landing page where we have a couple of resources for this community testing period. My contact information is on here, technical problems. We have instructions on how to access author dev. So if you are watching this and you forget that you need to create an account, that kind of thing, and you need to talk to me, you can go here for instructions on how to log in. If you're testing with LHI and you want to convert existing guided interviews to the newest version of either five or six, there's instructions there. If you want to upload to rebuild QA uh, for LHI, there's instructions as well. Note, the document assembly tool that I'm going to show you is not on LHI yet. So there, you are not able to upload, you're not able to run A to J templates on LHI yet, but we are planning for that in the spring. We also have a list of known issues, so that might be helpful for all of you that are working, that will be testing this guided the, this process. We have known issues with our guided interviews and our viewer alone with a list here that is shared by, uh, that is jointly updated by both the A to J team and the LHI teams. And then a separate section for known issues with the document assembly tool. If you do come across a bug, check the known issues list first. And if it's not on there, please email me with my contact information here so that I can investigate it and we can get our tech team working on it. All right, so I've covered all the nitty gritty details about before testing, so let's actually get into testing here and show you how to make a document assembly tool. So we're back on author dev. I click the author six button. I'm taken into my list of A to J guide interviews in author dev. You'll notice that this has been refreshed in terms of how it looks. If you've ever worked with A to J5 on our production site, we had rainbow colors, we had a little bit of different icons. We've um, made it a little more slick here. 
so it looks a little bit cooler, more Silicon Valley-esque. So for purposes of today, I made a demo that we're going to work through here. So it was called, just scroll down, I have quite a bit of interviews in mine, uh, November New User Demo. And I made a simple guided interview that we can then use to build our template. So in my examples for today, I want to show, highlight a couple of things in our document assembly tool. I want to show you how to add rich text elements to a template, and then I want to show you how to add conditional elements based on if-else statements. So we need to gather that information within a guided interview. So I created a simple guided interview that has my four steps here. You'll recognize the first three steps are the default ones that come with A to J author, uh, any blank guided interview. In that, I'm going to collect the user's name, their gender. Then I created a new question asking if they have children. I ask if there's been a substantial change in their circumstances. If they say yes, I ask what their change is. And then finally, I have the Get My Document page, which generates the document in the PDF. The only part that is different with creating a guided interview when you want to use the A to J doc assembly tool, and I'm just going to refer to it as the DAT, D-A-T, DAT, um, because it's easier than saying the whole thing. So the only difference with making a guided interview with a DAT is that you need to have a different destination button. So I am assuming all of you have made A to J guided interviews before. If not, we have trainings on specific features that I'm going to talk about within a guided interview or reach out to me separately. But so let's assume you've made your guided interview before and on that very last question where on a regular guided interview or a guided interview now, you would use the destination of success process form, which would be what would send the information either onto LHI or into your case management system or wherever you send the A to J uh, data after, you, uh, after your user fills out the guided interview. In using the DAT, you want to set the, the destination to assemble generate PDF or assemble, generate PDF, and process form. So here's the difference between the two brand new destinations. Assemble, generate PDF will generate the document for the end user, but keep them in the viewer. So that means it will not close the end user's uh, experience, the run of the guided interview. Whereas if um, you had success process form as the destination, it closes the viewer and sends their data on to whatever the next point is. In most cases, sends it on to LHI for processing with the hot docs template. In our case, assemble, generate PDF, generates the document, and then keeps the user in, their, in the window. So they would have to manually close the window themselves that, where the guided interview is running. With the second option is assemble, generate PDF, and process form. This will generate the document in the user's browser and close the current tab or pop-up that they're on where the A to J viewer is running and send the data to wherever the next point is. So wherever process form goes, that's where you're sending the end user. So in this case, it would be something like um, if it was connected and sitting on LHI, you'd hit, the end user would hit assemble, generate PDF and process form document would generate for them and their information would be sent to LHI where they could create an account and save it or email it or use all the other features that they have enabled on their site. So those are the two new destination buttons. For purposes of our, des our um, demo here, I don't actually want to close the viewer when I show you how it works, so I'm just going to leave it as assemble generate PDF. So if we run through this guided interview quickly, you'll see kind of the questions I'm asking. Whenever I test guided interview, I like to have the variables and script tab open. This way I can see that A to J is collecting the answers as expected and that the logic is running as expected as well. So we'll just go through this quickly to get an answer file that we can then use for testing purposes when we build our template. So this is the introduction. So now we can run through the interview, enter our information, email, let's say yes I have children and yes there's been a substantial change because I want to trigger both of the if else uh, logic that is based on true false statements here. What is the change? Test change. And I just want to show you that it can have lots of text. Oop. Oh. 
Okay, now at this point, Get My Document is going to generate the document in the PDF, and I'm still going to be here in the viewer. So when I click Get My Document, it downloads it. You can see it here at the bottom of my screen. If I open up the PDF, here's an example of the template. I'm going to show you how to build this here. So um, here's my name that I entered. Here's how the different text chunks can be aligned. And I have if else logic that's so based on whether I have children. I wanted to say I have children if the user had said they, they do have children. And if there had been a substantial change, I wanted to say there's been a substantial change. Here's the change. And here is the variable used to explain what the change was. So now that you've seen what it's supposed to look like, let's go and actually build it. So to build a guided interview, you build it in the templates tab. That's a brand new tab here uh, in A to J. So what we're going to replicate is this demo, which I showed you that test assembled here in this browser tab. And this is what it's going to look like when we're finished with today. So I have a rich text element. I have two conditional elements. Each one, the first one has an if and an else. The second one is only there if the substantial change is true. Otherwise, nothing will be there if substantial change is false. So to build this, I can add uh, a new template and a couple of things to note about the template section. So this is the template design sidebar. This sidebar has the add element section and the template options. Template options control the entire document. Add elements are specific chunks and can be customized individually. So for template options, I want to change the font to make it Times New Roman. I'm going to change the font size to 12 because that's more standard. Um, and I'm not going to have any sections on this, so I don't need to worry about numbering. I could make this entire template conditional on some uh, variable, being true, equaling something else, being false. If I click this, you can see the options. Whether it equals it, whether it doesn't equal, greater than, less than. So this would be an example in a guided interview in a document assembly package. You could have multiple templates. So you have a cover sheet template, you have the motion template, and you have the notice template. Each one of those is separate, but your end user needs all three to have a complete package. And then perhaps you have an additional document that is only for people with children. You could make that template conditional on whether or not user has children is true. And then A to J will only print that template if that variable is true or false or whatever, greater than. You can also add in custom headers and custom footers. The header and the footer contain the full text editor that's in the regular rich text element. So you can add in uh, that feature as well. So let's start by adding a rich text element. I add it, I open it up and I'm given the ability to add notes. So this is a great way to explain to yourself in the future or to the next person, developer, who's working on this template who has to update it in three years when the law changes. Um, add in notes explaining why you're doing certain things. So if you make something conditional, explain why you're making it conditional. If you um, have some formatting, you can explain it. So you can leave an array of notes behind in the file that the end user will never see, but the next person who has to work on this guided interview or template has notes built in for them. This is turning out that this is um, a particular problem within our community because we have um, a significant amount of turnover, particularly in older templates that are you know, eight to 10 years old. The same person is not still working at that legal aid organization a decade later, or they've forgotten why they did specific things. So it's important when you're new, as a new author, you're building new guided interviews and new templates to add in note fields wherever possible. We have a new TIG where we're going to build in the ability in A to J Author to run a report that pulls all of your notes out so that if you had annotations um, like this is based on statute 1234-2016, you could pull that out and then check that that law is still good, check that the assumptions built into the guided interview are still valid. So um, in next year's version of A to J Author, you'll have the ability to generate a report based on your notes section 
with within any guided interview. So start now. Start adding those notes. They'll be helpful for you in the future. After you have added in any notes you want, you can uh, edit within the text editor. So if you've ever done any uh, editing on like a Drupal website or um, any website design, this kind of looks familiar. This is called our rich text editor and we use CK editor as uh, the tool that's sitting behind our document assembly tool. It's an open source tool and it allows for pretty extensive formatting within a chunk of text. So for our purposes, let's just start here. So um, I want my template to say, hi, my name is, and I want the end user's information to come in here. So I want to add a variable here. I do that by clicking this little P within the brackets. And if you hover over each one of these icons, it tells you what it is. So this P is telling A to J you want to insert a variable. And then you can select the variable you want to insert. You can do it in two ways. I can either just pick client first name and hit OK, or I can start typing client, start typing the word client, and A to J will filter the variables based on whether or not they have those, th those letters in the name. So if you have a long list of variables, which you will likely have in an actual guided interview, you're going to want to use this typing function to filter. This filtering ability is also built into the guided interview, so when you add a variable, you can start searching for it, essentially, in any field you want to use it for. So let's add in client first name. I highlight it, I click OK, and you can see that it's inserted here. I then want to have my last name here as well, so I put a space between the variable, and I put in last name, insert the variable, and then I want to put a period after it. Uh, I am making a demo of the dat, and I can show you here, you can highlight it and embolden it, underline it. You can use italics, strike through, supra or subtext. You can add in lists, either numbered or bulleted. You can indent chunks of paragraph text, add in block quotes, indent or right align, left align, center align your text, um, add in paragraph breaks, add in hyperlinks. So I can show you this is right aligned, this is center aligned, then I can highlight it and change the alignment of just this chunk of text within the editor, and I can change it back to left aligned here. Interesting, cool things that you can add are checkboxes. I can insert a checkbox either checked or unchecked, so let's say I need a blank checkbox there in front of my name. If I want to add in a checked checkbox, I just say selected, and it adds it in here. We're working on adding in the ability to add checkboxes based on variables. And so instead of having to uh, put a blank checkbox or, or put a checked one, we are adding in the ability to tie in a variable to whether or not the box is checked. So if true, it would be checked. If false, unchecked. But for right now, that's not there in, in this version. You can also add in tables. Tables are ways in which you can copy or try to recreate formatting that exists in existing documents. So for example, I use tables to uh, get the proper spacing for a caption. So captions are some of the more difficult formatting to do because it requires the ellipses to be in a certain place, the case number to be in a specific place, the petitioner's information, the V for verses, and the respondent's information. You can mock some of that out in a caption with using the table, which uh, we'll save that one for another day. You can add in uh, emojis, you can add in images, all of these options, you just scroll over them and it'll tell you exactly what is going on within the CK editor. So let's save and close that, and now you can see um, a sort of a preview of what your text will look like. It, the preview, the size of this changes dependent on the size of your window, so you're going to want to keep test assembling to see how it actually looks in the generated document. And let's make uh, some text that is the next element conditional on whether or not they have children. So I'm going to base it on the variable that was in the question, do you have children? Have kids, TF. 
um, I want this, whatever I put in this chunk to be, tr if kids is true, then to add this stuff. And I need to add an else clause. Else, I want this stuff that I'm going to have there. So I'm going to save and close it. Then I'm going to start adding elements. I want a rich text element. So if they have children, I want it to say, I have children. Save it. You can add notes to specific elements. Else, so if children is false, I want it to say, I don't have children. Save and close this. So now I have one conditional chunk of text inserted if they have children and one chunk inserted if they don't. You can build in additional elements in here as well. And you can have a, a repeat loop nested inside of an if statement. You can have a rich text, a section break, or a page break nested inside of an if else statement right now. So we save and close the larger one. And let's add one more if-else statement here based on substantial change. So I'm going to base it on the substantial change variable. If it's true, I don't want an else here. If it's false, I don't want anything to show up. So if it's true, I want to add the element that says uh, there has been a substantial change. Here is the change, and I want to insert the variable that I collected um, the information about the change, which is change TE in my case. I can underline that whatever comes out, what I, I can format the value that's coming out using styles. So if I want all the text that comes out for change TE to be underlined, um, I highlight it and change the style. And you can see that it says inserted, and under insert it shows as underlined. So we save and close this. Now let's test assemble this based on a, uh, so I want to test assemble it. I want to test it to see if kids is true is working, and if substantial change is true is working. So I can click test assemble, the button over here on the right. Up pops an option for me to load an answer file. I made one earlier, so I know that answer 92 should work. I open it. I click Get PDF. It instantly downloads the, it generates the document. Open it up, and you can see that I have an unchecked box. I have my name here that I'm making a demo of the dat. Right alignment, center alignment, the box is checked back at left alignment. And it says, I have children. There has been a substantial change. Here's the change. And here's all the information I had input for the change itself. So this is a simple version of a template, but it gives you the basic ideas on how to use it. So thank you all for coming, and um, have a great November. I will see you all in December, which uh, for the next couple of new user webinars, we're going to be focusing on the DAT here, the Doc Assembly tool. So each month we'll be adding uh, a new user webinar that highlights specific features. I think next month is going to be on repeat loops. So thank you for coming.